Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out a 12 volt battery from WattCycle. But can you believe that this 12 volt battery is going to be 280 amp hours? So let's go ahead and open this up and see what we have. Alright, as soon as you open up the box you'll see the 12 volt series user's manual. Now, the first thing that I find kind of disappointing is that there's a whole list of batteries here, but none of them are 280 amp hour minis. Uh, there is a 12 volt 300 amp hour mini, uh, but does that have the same type of BMS that the 280 amp hour does? So, um, there's that right there. Ugh. And then there's the battery. And with the battery, you do get two sets of post bolts and post bolt covers. But look at this thing. I mean, look at the size of this thing. This is a 12 volt, 280 amp hour battery. Um, it's a lithium iron phosphate. It has 3,584 watt hours of capacity. Uh, it's also a smart addition, so we can connect it uh, to the app via Bluetooth. Um, and uh, like I said before, it's a mini. So let's go ahead and get the measurements of this thing. All right, including the handles, it is about 15 inches across. It is a little under 10 inches tall. And the depth is seven and a quarter inches. So this is very small for a 280 amp hour battery. But just because it's small doesn't mean that it's light. I just weighed it and it weighs 60.5 pounds. But just because it's a 280 amp hour battery doesn't mean that you should treat it any different than your typical 12 volt 100 amp hour battery. You still wanna check the terminals to see what the voltage is. And then you wanna do a capacity test to make sure that you're getting the 280 amp hours that you paid for. So let's go ahead and check the voltage now. All right, and the voltage right out of the box is 13.19 volts and that is perfect all right well i was just about to start charging this thing up and then do a capacity test and i wanted to see what kind of uh, information i could find about the bms but since this user's manual doesn't specify the 280 amp hour version i can just kind of guess between the 200 and the 300 amp hour version but the 200 and the 300 amp hour versions have a maximum continuous discharge rate of 200 amps. And it says that it is recommended that you charge this. Uh, if it were 200, you recommended to charge it at 40 amps. And if it was 300 amp hours, you would be recommended to charge it at 60 amps continuous. Uh, and those both do have a 200 amp maximum continuous charge as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just throw a uh, 50 amp charger on here to get it charged up. And then I'm going to do a capacity test to see if we actually do get at least 280 amp hours. All right, everyone. Well, the uh, capacity test is done for the watt cycle 280 amp hour battery. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right. As you can see on this graph, we are starting at right around 12.97 so like it, it keeps at 13 volts all the way to about 30 percent of the test actually 12.9 actually i was wrong about that about 35 percent of the test and uh and then it kind of drops a little bit but then it stays between 12.9 and 12.8 all the way to uh what 55% and then it stays at 12.8 to 12.7 all the way to about uh, what, 70, almost 75% and by the time we get to 95% of the capacity of the battery it's still at 12.3 volts. What we got is a capacity of 303.5 uh, amp hours which is very good for a 280 amp hour battery. That's what we should expect. Um, and you can see that the average voltage is 12.75 volts. So that's why they call these 12.8 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries because from 100% to zero, you should average around 12.8 volts. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and try to do some high amperage testing. 
All right, everyone, I believe I have everything set up for my high amperage testing, and it is going to be a doozy. What we have set up here is the, uh, the watt cycle 280 amp hour 12 volt battery, and we have three separate inverters wired into it. We have two 2000 watt inverters, one from Lee Sky and the other one from Zizrox. And then we have our typical 5000 watt inverter from MX Moonfree. Now the reason I have all of these wired up is because this thing can do 200 amps continuous uh, with no problem. So I mean one of these inverters, well this inverter could do that just fine. But it does say that it has like a maximum discharge of like 800 amps or something like that and i don't even know if i have enough power here to even pull that off but i'm going to try and what i'm going to be powering hopefully and i gotta say hopefully i don't have to turn all of this stuff on but what i have is my uh, thousand watt elite gourmet i have a thousand watt heat gun i have my new wave which can go up to what 1300 watts i have my griddler which is 1100 watts and i have a 1500 watt heater down here so that's all plugged in and ready to go so first i'm going to do 200 amps continuous for five minutes just to make sure everything's fine and what we're going to use to monitor it is actually the app so let's go ahead and pull that up now all right, I went ahead and pulled up the app, and I want to let you know that I've, re, uh, I've reviewed a couple of uh, watt cycle batteries with uh, smart BMSs, and they used a different app. Uh, this is the first one that actually uses the watt cycle app, and I didn't, I didn't know that. I thought it would just work with the old app, and it doesn't. So if you get a new watt cycle battery, make sure and use the QR code that comes with the battery uh, to download the app that is with that battery because it might be the old one it might be the new one but the new one i believe works with all of the old batteries so here's what it looks like right here all right so you can see right here i i uh, started it up and it's looking for the batteries that i have uh, this top one is the 280 amp hour so i'll click on that and confirm it's now connected and this battery is at 59%. Uh, the temperature of the battery is 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the charging and discharging uh, settings are both on. The voltage of the battery is 13.2 volts. Uh, let's see, uh, if you click about, it kind of gives you some, uh, some software versions, app versions, stuff like that. If you go to settings, you can see all your settings, but I don't believe you can change them. Let's try to change the max uh, charging current from 210 to 250, or to 200. So we'll put 200 here. Set. Oh, setup complete. Oh my God, it did change it. So it lets you change the settings in the BMS, which is uh, surprising because um, they usually don't let you do that. So enjoy it while you can, because there'll probably be an update where they're going to lock that up. <laughs> and I noticed on here in these settings, there is no max discharge current, which is kind of unfortunate. So we're going to go ahead and use this app to monitor how much amperage is, is coming out of the battery. So let's go ahead and start. We're going to try to do 200 amps. So let's go ahead and just turn all these on first. All of them are on, and you can see that we have an amp draw of about 1.9 amps with three inverters wired into, the, wired into the battery. To get our 200 amps, we're gonna go ahead and start up this heat gun and this Elite Gourmet, and we're gonna hopefully get right around 200 amps from that. So let's begin. All right, and the, amp, or the, the app shows 191 amps. So let's just go ahead and run it at that for five minutes just to make sure it can handle it just fine. All right, well, it's been uh, five minutes and it's been pushing about 194 to 195 uh, amps and it has not had an issue whatsoever. So we are gonna start just adding more and more resistive loads until it shuts off. So let's go ahead and put this griddler on. That's again another 1100 watts. And look at that. The battery just shut off and we got a warning, an overcurrent protection warming on amperage. 
So I, <laughs> that's a bummer. I wired all this stuff up for nothing. It quit right when I introduced another 1100 uh, watts, which is exactly the way it should work, which is perfect. And you can see on the app that the discharging uh, setting has been turned off. So let's go ahead and turn that back off. Let's turn this off, turn this off. And let's see if we can actually turn the, turn the battery back on from the app. Fortunately, this battery worked exactly the way that it should. And in the app, you can see that I can turn off the charging and discharging which is a very nice feature. All right, well, the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in a 12 volt cooler and I'm gonna set it to, um, uh, to basically freezing. Uh, and I know that Watt Cycle always sets their BMSs five degrees lower than, uh, than 32. So they set them at like 27 degrees. So I'm gonna make sure that this battery is at about 25 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll leave it in there for 24 hours and then we'll see if it'll charge. All right, well this watt cycle 280 amp hour 12 volt battery has been in this ice co uh, portable refrigerator for well over 24 hours. On the app, you can see that the temperature in the battery right now is actually 22.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is reading it while this is closed. So that's kind of a good little feature. The, the Bluetooth is, uh, you know, it has a really good signal. But if you look at the warnings, We'll go ahead and click on warnings. You can see that there is actually a charge under temperature alarm currently active. So this, uh, I have a feeling this is going to be uh, passing this next test with no problem. Uh, and also if we go to the settings, like if we go to about, and then we go to settings, you can actually see that there is a uh, minimum charge temperature set to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. I didn't see that before when I was in the settings the last time. I'm sure someone else did, but. Uh, so that is another indication that this is well below temperature. But anyway, let's go ahead and pull this battery out, uh, throw it on the charger just to make sure that it doesn't charge. All right, well, I got the battery out of that 12 volt cooler. Um, the battery was just big enough, so it went down and it got caught under the lip of the cooler and I couldn't get it back out. So I actually, I actually had to cut, I actually had to cut the handle of the battery off. So there's no more handle, which is, which is a bummer cause it's like 60 something pounds. That's what it's supposed to look like. And that's what it looks like now. But the good thing is I can open up the app and I'm gonna see if it still says that it's under temperature. Cause I was working at it for like 15 minutes. I wouldn't be, I'd be very surprised if it was able to get up uh, above 32 degrees in 15 minutes. Yeah, and it still says that it's 24.3 degrees and it still says that there's a warning. So let's go and just hook it up to a charger and see if it charges. All right, I've got this Litime 20 amp charger connected to it and you can see that it is flashing green right now. That means that it's on standby. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna connect this positive up to the battery and it will go to a solid red for hopefully just one or two seconds. Um, and then it will go to a solid green because the battery told the charger to shut off. So let's go ahead and try it now. All right, solid red. And solid green. It took a little bit longer than I like, but, but anything under five seconds is, uh, I believe is just fine. So we do know that the low temperature charging protection does work. After using my new favorite uh, battery opening tool, uh, you know, I've given up on trying to crack them open. I'm just cutting them. I think I got it open, so let's go ahead and check it out. All right, in true uh, watt cycle fashion, this battery looks very clean, but there is the code for the BMS if anybody can uh, if anybody knows anything about it, that'd be perfect. There over here is the Bluetooth module. You can see that it's lit up in blue. Um, I can see that they are welded bus bars, which are nice. And it, it has this tape on here. The wiring looks like a four eight gauge wire on the positive 
and three, probably three six gauge wire for the negative, which is nice. And then there's also three, three six gauge going to the terminal on the top from the BMS. Um, I can see the, uh, I can see the pressure valve for the cell right down there. So that's good that they have it opened up so it can actually do its job. Um, I see a temperature sensor right here and it is glued directly to the top of the battery right where it should be. And I'm guessing there's probably more temperature sensors. It looks like there's two cause there's a wiring probably for two right there. All right, and it wasn't glued down to the bottom at all. And look, look at this framework. I mean, it's got this beefy, what, what is this, aluminum frame? I'm, I guess it's aluminum, I'm not. Yeah, magnet doesn't stick to it. But you can see the four prismatic cells right here. See that the, uh, the bus bars in between the cells ha uh, has a raised up center right here, so it, it allows for expansion and contraction which is great. But for my eyes, this thing is really well constructed. It has glue where it needs to be. It has the proper bus bars for expansion and contraction. The cabling on the batteries is well within specs of what it should be. And so I am very happy with the construction of this battery. All right, so if you have any questions about the Watt Cycle 12 volt, 280 amp hour mini battery uh, with Bluetooth and low temperature charging protection included, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. Uh, this battery passed all my tests, even though I wasn't expecting it to. The high amperage test, I was expecting it to completely fail, and I had it all set up, multiple inverters to watch this thing fail, and it didn't. And then it came with a new app, and that new app, for right now, you can actually change the settings. So, uh, enjoy that while you can. But Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.